Good morning, brethren, sisters, Church of the Living God. Hello. This video, brethren, is a public repentance and correction of an error that I did in the one video, um, Where Do Devils or Where Did Devils Come From? In that video, we looked in Revelation chapter 12. And I said in that video that I believed, that I personally believed, that in Revelation chapter 12, verses 7 on to verse 9 were, had already happened, meaning that it was a descriptive of what had happened prior as to why Satan was cast out or kicked out of heaven. That I did say, uh, that I personally believed that. And uh, brethren, that was an error. I was wrong. And the Lord has rebuked me and corrected me through the scriptures for that error. And it is, I have to, and I'm going to, um, Lord willing, we are going to go through Revelation chapter 12. And um, we're doing this, number one, to, um, to, create, to um, correct the error that I, that I made in saying that, but also to show that, guess what? I make mistakes. And when I make a mistake or are, or are in error, uh, the Lord will correct me and rebuke me through the scriptures. And it's important for me that you see these things. That yes, I make mistakes. And praise the Lord, whom the Lord loveth, he correcteth. So, brethren, look at me. I was wrong in saying that uh, Revelation chapter 12, verses 7 and 9 had already happened. I was wrong, and I was in error. And this video is going to be in the description box of that video, Where Did Devils Come From? So it will be so noted. And I'm keeping that video up like I have with all the videos where I have been in error. I'm keeping them up so you can see that, yes, I make mistakes. And in the videos that I have made error, I have put uh, where when the Lord corrected me and I made a correction video of that, I have put the correction video in the description box of that video in where the error was. Because it's important for you, Church of the Living God, to see that, yes, I make mistakes. And yes, the Lord corrects me. I have nothing to hide from you. Nothing. And unlike others who delete their videos to cover their tracks, I'm not doing that. I'm not going to do that. It's important for me, brethren, that you see this. Okay? Forgive me of the error I repent. Okay? Please forgive me, brothers and sisters, Church of the Living God. Okay? Well, we are going to go through this chapter, Revelation chapter 12. Okay? Now, let's remember something. Book of Revelation is not written to us. It's written for us, but it is not written to us. The church of the living God is not present for the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay? We're not there. The time of Jacob's trouble, Israel's trouble, the Jews. Okay? That is what this is for. Okay? Let us keep that in mind. All right? So, let us begin this, shall we? 
Revelation chapter 12, beginning at verse 1. We're going to read verses 1 and verse 2 to start. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun, and the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of twelve stars. And she being with child cried, travailing in birth, and pained to be delivered. Now, I have heard it disputed of who this woman is. Okay? Who is this woman? Here. Who is this woman? You're going to need your ribbon marker for this. Go to the book of Psalms. The book of Psalms. Psalm 9. Okay? Psalm 9. Who is this woman? Psalm 9, verses 1 on to verse 14. I will praise thee, O Lord, with my whole heart. I will shew forth all thy marvelous works. I will be glad and rejoice in thee. I will sing praise to thy name, O thou most high. When mine enemies are turned back, they shall fall and perish at thy presence. For thou hast maintained my right and my cause. Thou saddest in the throne judging right. Thou hast rebuked the heathen. Thou hast destroyed the wicked. Thou hast put out their name forever and ever. O thou enemy, destructions are come to a perpetual end. And thou hast destroyed cities. Their memorial is perished with them. But the Lord shall endure forever. He hath prepared his throne for judgment. And where is this throne going to be? In Jerusalem. Okay? And he shall judge the world in righteousness. He shall minister judgment to the people in uprightness. The Lord also will be a refuge for the oppressed, a refuge in times of trouble. And they that know thy name will put their trust in thee, for thou, Lord, hast not forsaken them that seek thee. Sing praises to the Lord, which dwelleth in Zion. Zion. Note that. Declare among the people his doings. When he maketh inquisition for blood, he remembereth them. He forgetteth not the cry of the humble. Have mercy upon me, O Lord. Consider my trouble, which I suffer of them that hate me. Thou that liftest me up from the gates of death. Put that into the equation uh, for the time of Jacob's trouble, right? Now check this out. That I may shew forth all thy praises in the gates of the daughter of Zion. I will rejoice in thy salvation. Daughter of Zion. Hmm. Interesting. Psalm 14. One verse. Psalm 14, one verse, verse 7. Oh, that the salvation of Israel were come out of Zion, when the Lord bringeth back the captivity of his people. Jacob shall rejoice, and Israel shall be glad. His people. Jacob shall rejoice, and Israel shall be glad. Oh, that the salvation of Israel were come out of Zion. Hmm. Interesting. Psalm 51. Psalm 51. One verse again. Psalm 51. One verse. Verse 18. Do good in thy good pleasure unto Zion. Build thou the walls of Jerusalem. Thou shalt, uh, excuse me. <laughs> Do good in thy good pleasure unto Zion. Build thou the walls of Jerusalem. <clears throat> okay. So, Zion. Daughters of Zion. Israel. Jacob. 
Do good in thy good pleasure unto Zion. Build thou the walls of Jerusalem. Hmm. Psalm 69. Psalm 69, verses 32 on to verse 36. Psalm 69, verses 32 on to verse 36. The humble shall see this and be glad, and your heart shall live that seek God. For the Lord heareth the, the, heareth the poor and despiseth not his prisoners. Let the heaven and earth praise him, the seas and everything that moveth therein. For God will save Zion and will build the cities of Judah that they may dwell there and have it in possession. The seed of his servant shall inherit it. Remember the seed. That's going to come into play later. And they that love his name shall dwell therein. Hmm. For God, look at verse 35. For God will save Zion and will build the cities of Judah. Hmm. Psalm 78. Psalm 78, verses 67 on to verse 72. Moreover, he refused the tabernacle of Joseph and chose not the tribe of Ephraim, but chose the tribe of Judah. Um, from what tribe was our Lord Jesus Christ accounted thereunto? tribe of Judah. But chose the tribe of Judah, the Mount Zion which he loved. And he built his sanctuary like high palaces, like the earth which he hath established forever. He chose David also his servant, and took him from the sheepfolds. David his servant. Our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, is known as the Son of David making reference unto his kingship, king of the Jews. And when our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, comes back, he will be ruling and reigning from Jerusalem as king of the Jews. As king, okay? So the son of David, remember, is always a reference uh, when it pertains unto our Lord Jesus Christ, unto his kingship. Okay, remember that. And it says here, He chose David his, also his servant and took him from the sheep folds, from amongst his own. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. His own, the Jews, remember? Let's continue. From following the ewes great with young, he brought him to feed Jacob, his people, and Israel, his inheritance. So he fed them according to the integrity of his heart and guided them by the skillfulness of his hands. Hmm. Psalm 102. Psalm 102. Hmm. If there is a psalm among many that deals specifically, <laughs> it's Psalm 102. Psalm 102, verses 12 on to verse 15. Psalm 102, verses 12 on to verse 15. But thou, O Lord, shalt endure forever, and thy remembrance unto all generations. Thou shalt arise and have mercy upon Zion. Now look at this. For the time to favor her, Yea, the set time, the set time is come. For thy servants, for thy servants take pleasure in her stones and favor the dust thereof. So the heathen shall fear the name of the Lord and all the kings of the earth thy glory. Look at that verse. Verse 13. Thou shalt arise and have mercy upon Zion. For the time to favor her, yea, the set time is come. For thy servants take pleasure in her stones, and favor the dust thereof. 
When the abomination that maketh desolate is set up, the son of perdition goes into the third temple, the rebuilt temple, declaring himself to be God. Jewish people are going to be like, oh, boy. Oh, boy. Okay? Oh, boy. The set time favor her has come. During the time of Jacob's trouble, I believe it'll be when the abomination that maketh desolate is set up. You know, the man of sin, son of perdition, okay? When he goes to declare and declares himself God, I believe that's when the Jewish people are going to be like, oh boy. Oh boy. And they're going to turn to the scriptures. Psalm 110. Psalm 110. Psalm 110. The Lord said unto my Lord, Sit thou at my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool. The Lord shall send the rod of thy strength out of Zion. Rule thou in the midst of thine enemies. Thy people shall be willing in the day of thy power, in the beauties of holiness, from the womb of the morning... Thou hast the dew of thy youth. The womb of the morning? Hmm. The Lord has sworn and will not repent. Thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. Who is Melchizedek? Our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. The Lord at thy right hand shall strike through kings in the day of his wrath. He shall judge among the heathen. He shall fill the places with the dead bodies. He shall wound the heads over many countries. He shall drink of the brook of the in the way. Therefore shall he lift up the head. Hmm. We're leaving no doubt to who this woman is. Go to the Song of Solomon. The Song of Solomon, chapter 3. Song of Songs, which is Solomon's, chapter 3. Song of Solomon, chapter 3. By night on my bed I saw him whom my soul loveth. I sought him, but I found him not. I will rise now and go about the city and the streets, and in the broad ways I will seek him whom my soul loveth. Oh, beg your pardon. I sought him, but I found him not. The watchmen that go about the city found me, to whom I said, Saw ye him whom my soul loveth? It was but a little that I passed from them. But I found him whom my soul loveth. I held him and would not let him go, until I had brought him into my mother's house, into the chamber of her that conceived me. Re uh, Revelation 12, verses 1 and 2 again. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of twelve stars. And she, being with child, cried, travailing in, in birth, and pain to be delivered. Song of Songs, verse 4. It was but a little that I passed from them, but I found him whom my soul loveth, when the Jewish people during the time of Jacob's trouble will believe on our Lord Jesus Christ, their king, their God, our father, okay? When they will come to believe, it's like, whoa, Jesus Christ is our promised Messiah. He is our king, okay? I found him whom my soul loveth. I held him and would not let him go. Until I had brought him into my mother's house. My mother's house. Israel. Until I had brought him into my mother's house. Brought tidings unto the Jewish people during that time. That yes, Jesus Christ is in fact their promised Messiah. The King of the Jews. Bringing it back unto their people. See. And into the chamber of her that conceived me. I charge you, O ye daughters of Jerusalem, of Jerusalem, 
by the rose and by the hens of the field, that ye stir not up, nor awake my love till he please. Do not tempt the Lord. You hear about what's going on in Jerusalem and Israel right now about these Noahide laws, that they are uh, telling people to do evil, that good may come, their Messiah, who they are going to mistake as the son of perdition. You know, they're going to mistake him to be their Messiah. Okay? Behold his bed, which is Solomon's. Three score valiant men are about it, of the valiant of Israel. They all hold swords, being expert in war. Every man hath his sword upon his thigh because of fear uh, in the night. King Solomon made himself a chariot of the wood of, Le of Lebanon. You have to remember, uh, in the Song of Solomon, Solomon mentioned here in the book of Song of Solomon is likened unto a type of Christ. He has a Gentile bride, Church of the Living God, okay? Remember that, okay? He made the pillars thereof of silver, the bottom thereof of gold, the covering of it of purple, the mist thereof being paved with love for the daughters of Jerusalem. See that? Go forth, O ye daughters of Zion. Daughters of Jerusalem, daughters of Zion? Hmm. And behold, King Solomon, with the crown wherewith his mother crowned him in the day of his espousals. The crown wherewith his mother crowned him. Okay? Not talking about the Roman Catholic Mary Semiramis. No. When Israel, when Israel will come to accept their king, their God, their Messiah, our Lord Jesus Christ. When they come to accept and believe, yes, Jesus Christ is our king, is our Messiah, promised to us. Go, ye, go forth, O ye daughters of Zion, Jews, and behold King Solomon, Lord Jesus Christ, with the crown wherewith his mother crowned him in the day of his espousals, and in the day of the gladness of his heart. When the Jewish people, during the time of Jacob's trouble, will come to accept and believe on their Lord Jesus Christ as their God, their King, their Messiah. <clears throat> now, go back to Revelation chapter 12 and looking at verse 1 again. Look at this. A woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet. Go to Jeremiah chapter 33. Jeremiah chapter 33. Jeremiah chapter 33, we will be reading verses 15 on to verse 22. Jeremiah chapter 33, verses 15 on to verse 22. In those days, and at that time, will I cause the capital B, branch of righteousness to grow up unto David, Talking about our Lord Jesus Christ reigning as king. And he shall execute judgment and righteousness in the land. In those days shall Judah be saved, and Jerusalem shall dwell safely. And this is the name wherewith she shall be called. The Lord, our righteousness. For thus saith the Lord, David shall never want a man to sit upon the throne of the house of Israel. Neither shall the priests, the Levites, want a man before me to offer burnt offerings and to kindle meat offerings and to do sacrifice continually. And the word of the Lord came unto Jeremiah, saying, Thus saith the Lord, check this out, If ye can break my covenant of the day, sunshine, the sun, and my covenant of the night, the moon, and that there should not be day and night in their season. Then may also my covenant be broken with David my servant, that he should not have a son to reign upon his throne, and with the Levites, the priests, 
my ministers. As the host of heaven cannot be numbered, neither the sand of the sea measure, so will I multiply the seed of David my servant and the Levites that minister unto me. Brethren, we have to remember that the Jew is still and always has been the apple of God's eye. The time of Jacob's trouble is for the Jews, not the purification of the church. No, it's for the Jews. The church of the living God is not there during the time of Jacob's trouble. And the Jews have these promises. And where it says here in verse 20, If ye can break my covenant of the day and my covenant of the night, and that there should not be day and night in their season, then may also my covenant be broken with David my servant. That Jesus Christ is going to come and rule and reign from Jerusalem as king of the Jews. Okay? Now looking at verse 2 in Revelation chapter 12. Okay? Oh, wait, wait, wait. Before we get to that, we have to address this too. And upon her head a crown of 12 stars. Upon her head a crown of 12 stars. Who are these 12 stars? We, you may, you are the church of the living God. You know this, of course, but we're going to go through this. Okay? Genesis chapter 49. Genesis chapter 49. Okay? Genesis 49. Come on, fingers, work with me. Genesis chapter 49, one verse. Verse 28. Who are these 12 stars? All these are the 12 tribes of Israel. And this is it that their father spake unto them and blessed them. Everyone according to his blessing, he blessed them. The 12 stars. Okay? Deuteronomy chapter 18. Deuteronomy chapter 18. Deuteronomy chapter 18, verses 15. On to verse 19. Okay? Deuteronomy chapter 18, verses 15 on to verse 19. The Lord thy God will raise up unto thee a prophet from the midst of thee, of thy brethren, like unto me, unto him ye shall hearken, according to all that thou desirest of the Lord thy God in Horeb, in the day of the assembly, saying, Let me not hear again the voice of the Lord my God, neither let me see this great fire any more, that I die not. And the Lord said unto me, They have well spoken that which they have spoken. I will raise them up a prophet from among their brethren, like unto thee. And I will put my words in his mouth, and he shall speak unto them all that I shall command him. And it shall come to pass that whosoever whosoever will not hearken unto my words which he shall speak in my name, I will require it of him. Prophecy of our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. Of thy brethren. Okay? Of thy brethren. Okay? Isaiah chapter 59. Isaiah chapter 59. Isaiah chapter 59, verses 20 on to verse 21. Isaiah 59, verses 20 on to verse 21. And the Redeemer, capital R there, shall come to Zion. And unto them that turn from transgression in Jacob, saith the Lord. As for me, this is my covenant with them, saith the Lord. My spirit that is upon thee, and my words which I have put in thy mouth, shall not depart out of thy mouth, nor out of the mouth of thy seed, remember that, thy seed, remember that, nor out of the mouth of thy seed's seed, saith the Lord, from henceforth and forever. 
And finally, on this, James chapter 1. James chapter 1. Verse 1. James chapter 1, verse 1. James, a servant of God of the Lord and of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the twelve tribes which are scattered abroad. Greeting. Revelation chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of twelve stars. And she, being with child, cried, travailing in birth and pain to be delivered. Who is this woman? Hello, this woman is Israel. Okay? Who are the twelve and these this crown of twelve stars? The twelve tribes of Israel. And she being with child, Jesus Christ, God our Father, came of Israel, of the tribe of Judah. Okay? And it says here, in pain to be delivered. Remember in the book of Exodus, chapter two, specifically, where our let's go there. Exodus chapter two. Exodus chapter 2, okay? Exodus chapter 2. Exodus chapter 2. Okay? Exodus chapter 2. Verses 23 on to verse 24. And it came to pass in process of time that the king of Egypt died, and the children of Israel sighed by reason of bondage, and they cried, and their came, cry came up unto God by reason of the bondage. And God heard their groaning, and God remembered his covenant with Abraham, with Isaac, and with Jacob. And God looked upon the children of Israel, and God had respect unto them. Okay? And then when you read in Exodus about Moses, okay, cried to be delivered, okay? They cried to be delivered. Or pain to be delivered, excuse me. Verse 2, And she being with child cried, travailing in birth, pain to be delivered. During this time, especially when the son of perdition goes forth, saying, I am God. Mm. Children of Israel are going to be, are being, are be, going to be crying and pain to be delivered. Okay? doesn't mean that the first three and a half years of the time of Jacob's trouble are going to be peaceful. No, because the son of perdition, the beast, is going to go forth conquering and to conquer. Yes. But when the abomination that make it desolate is set up, which is spoken of by Daniel the prophet, who so readeth, let him understand. Okay? Okay? Now, is there any doubt to who this woman is and who the 12 stars are? Okay? Is there any doubt? Okay? There is no doubt. This woman is Israel. Okay? Israel. Daughters of Judah. Daughters of Zion. Daughters of Jerusalem. Israel. Zion. Jerusalem. Judah. Hello. Hello. Okay? Now. Revelation chapter 12, verses 3, on to verse 5 now, okay? And there appeared another wonder in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon, having seven heads and ten horns, and seven crowns upon his head. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven, and did cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman, which was ready to be delivered, for to devour her child as soon as it was born. And she brought forth a man-child, who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron. And her child was caught up unto God, and to his throne. A lot here, isn't there? Look at verse 3. Okay. And there appeared a wonder in heaven. And behold, a great red dragon having seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns upon his head. Revelation chapter 17, verses 1 on to verse 9. 
Okay. And the dragon, you'll see who the dragon is later on in uh, the book of Revelation chapter 12. But Revelation chapter 17, verses 1, on to verse 9. And there came one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials, and talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither, I will shew unto thee the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness, and I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet-colored beast, full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand, full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. Now, is this talking about America? No. 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 Her colors are purple and scarlet. Okay? Purple and scarlet. Rome. Verse 5, And upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. And I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. And when I saw her, I wondered with great admiration. And the angel said unto me, Wherefore did this thou marvel? I will tell thee the mystery of the woman. And of the beast that carrieth her away, which hath the seven heads and ten horns. The beast that thou sawest was, and is not, and shall ascend out to the bottomless pit, and go into perdition. And they that dwell on the earth shall wonder, whose names were not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world. When they behold the beast that was, and is not, and yet is. And here is the mind which hath wisdom. The seven heads are seven mountains on which the woman sitteth. Verse 18. And the woman which thou sawest is that great city which reigneth over the kings of the earth. It's not Jerusalem. Mystery Babylon the Great. It's Rome. Roman Catholicism. Okay? It's Roman Catholicism. Rome. Rome is who is being described in Revelation chapter 17. Verse 3 in Revelation chapter 12. And there appeared another wonder in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon, having seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns upon his heads. Um, Satan rules Rome. He is the head of the Roman Catholic Church. Okay? The Church of Rome is Satan's church. Okay? You have to remember that. It's not Jerusalem. Okay? It's not Jerusalem. It's Rome. Okay? That is being described in Revelation chapter 17. And also, go to Daniel chapter 7. Daniel chapter 7. <clears throat> Daniel chapter 7. We will be reading verses 1 on to verse 8. Daniel chapter 7, verses 1 on to verse 8. In the first year of Belshazzar, king of Babylon, Daniel had a dream and visions of his head upon his bed. Then he wrote the dream and told the sum of the matter. Daniel spake and said, I saw in my vision by night, and behold, the four winds of the heavens strove upon the great sea. And four great beasts came up from the sea, diverse from one from another. The first was like a lion and had eagle's wings. I beheld till the wings thereof were plucked, and it was lifted up from the earth and made stand upon the feet as a man, and a man's heart was given to it. And behold, another beast, a second, like to a bear, and it raised up itself on one side, and it had three ribs in the mouth of it, between the teeth of it. And they said thus unto it, Arise, devour much flesh. After this I beheld, and lo, another, 
like a leopard, which had upon the back of it four wings of a fowl. The beast had also four heads, and dominion was given to it. After this I saw in the night visions, and behold, a fourth beast, fourth beast, dreadful and terrible and strong exceedingly, and it had great iron teeth. It devoured and brake in pieces, and stamped the residue with the feet of it, and it was diverse from all the beasts that were before it, and it had ten horns, ten horns. I considered the horns, and behold, there came up among them another little horn, with before whom there were three of the first horns plucked up by the roots. And behold, in this horn were eyes like the eyes of man, and a mouth speaking great things. Now, the iron teeth, talking about Rome. Okay? And I considered the horns, and behold, there came up among them another little horn before whom there were three of the first horns plucked up by the roots, the three other beasts. And behold, in his horn were like the eyes of the Lord, like the eyes of man, and a mouth speaking great things. Hmm, speaking great things. Okay, now go to verse 4. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven and did cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman which was ready to be delivered for to devour her child as soon as it was born. Verse 4, go to Matthew chapter 2. Go to Matthew chapter 2. Matthew chapter 2. Verses 1 on to verse 10. Matthew chapter 2, verses 1 on to verse 10. Look at this in verse 4. And the dragon stood before the woman, the woman is Israel, which was ready to be delivered, for to devour her child as soon as it was born. Matthew chapter 2, verses 1 on to verse 10. Now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, Behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east, and are come to worship him. When Herod the king had heard these things, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. And when he had gathered all the chief priests and the scribes of the people together, he demanded of them where Christ should be born. And they said unto him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written by the prophet, and thou, Bethlehem, and thou Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, art not the least among the princes of Judah. For out of thee shall come a governor that shall rule my people Israel. Then Herod, when he had privily called the wise men, inquired of them diligently what time the star appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search diligently for the young child. And when ye have found him, bring me word that I may come and worship him also. Yeah, right. He was trying to uh, put on this facade. Oh, yeah, bring me this child so I may worship him. Then why was he troubled in verse 3? Hmm? Why was he troubled in verse 3? Verse 9. When they had heard that, when they had heard the king, they departed. And lo, the star which was the star which they saw in the east went before them, till it came and stood over where the young child was. When they saw the star, they were, they, when they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceeding great joy. Okay? So now, Herod was troubled by the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ. And he said, well, it's like, bring me word that I can go and worship him. Okay? The wise men were warned of God. How many they were, we don't know. Okay, people think it's three because of three gifts. We know it was at least two, probably more than that. But 
the wise men were warned of God not to return unto Herod. And look what happens. Look what happens. Verses uh, 16 on to verse 18 in Matthew chapter 2. Okay? Let's refresh our memories. In verse 4, in Revelation chapter 12, And the dragon stood before the woman which was ready to be delivered, for to devour her child as soon as it was born. Some might be arguing, it's like, well, Satan wasn't involved with Herod. Really? Really? You don't think Satan had something to do with Herod wanting to kill the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father? You know, kill the child? You don't think Satan had anything to do with that, huh? <clears throat> You're crazy if you believe that. Matthew chapter 2, verse 16 on to verse 18. Then Herod, when he saw that he was mocked of the wise men, was exceeding wroth and sent forth and slew all the children that were in Bethlehem and in all the coasts thereof from two years old and under, according to the time which he had diligently inquired of the wise men. Then was fulfilled that which was spoken by Jeremy the prophet, saying, In Ramah was there a voice heard, lamentation and weeping and great mourning, Rachel reaping for her children, and would not be comforted because they were not. Okay? Now that we saw in Matthew chapter 2 that that prophecy was, re was revealed or fulfilled. But the point is, Herod straightway wanted to kill the child, Jesus. And what does it say in Revelation chapter 4? And the dragon stood before the woman which was ready to be delivered for to devour her child as soon as it was born. Okay? Now go to Daniel chapter 8. Daniel chapter 8. Daniel chapter 8. Daniel chapter 8, verses 1 on to verse 12. In the third year of the reign of King Belshazzar, a vision appeared unto me, even unto me, Daniel, after that which appeared unto me at the first. And I saw in a vision, and it came to pass when I saw that I was at Shushan in the palace, which is in the province of Elam. And I saw in a vision, and I was by the river of Uli. Then I lifted up mine eyes and saw, and behold, there stood before the river a ram which had two horns, and the two horns were high. But one was higher than the other, and the higher came up last. And I saw the ram pushing westward and northward and southward, so that no beast might stand before him. Neither was there any that could deliver out of his hand, but he did according to his will and became great. Notice very quickly something, okay? I saw the ram pushing northward, southward, westward, okay? Pushing westward, northward, and southward, but not eastward. Hmm. Interesting. Verse 5. And as I was considering, behold, and he go, came from the west on the face of the whole earth and touched not the ground. And the goat had a notable horn between his eyes. And he came to the ram that had two horns, which I had seen standing before the river, and ran unto him in the fury of his power. And I saw him come close unto the ram, and he was moved with choler against him, and smote the ram, and brake his two horns. And there was no power in the ram to stand before him, but he cast him down to the ground, and stamped upon him. And there was none that could deliver the ram out of his hand. Therefore, the he-goat waxed very great, and when he was strong, the great horn was broken. 
and for it came up four notable ones toward the four winds of heaven. This you could reference, make a reference onto the kingdom of Alexander the Great. Okay, you could. And out of one of them came forth a little horn, which waxed exceeding great toward the south and toward the east and toward the pleasant land. And it waxed great even to the host of heaven. And it cast down some of the host of the stars to the ground and stamped upon them. Verse 4 in Revelation chapter 12. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven. And it cast them to the earth. <clears throat> Verse 10 in Daniel chapter 8. And it waxed great, even to the host of heaven. And it cast down some of the host of the stars to the ground and stamped upon them. Yea, he magnified himself even to the prince of the host. And by him, the daily sacrifice was taken away. And the place of his sanctuary was cast down. And an host was given him against the daily sacrifice by reason of transgression. And it cast down the truth to the ground. And it practiced and prospered. Oh boy. Oh boy, huh? Oh boy. And, he, and his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven and did cast them to the earth. Okay? And we're going to look a little bit more about the stars of heaven there. And the dragon stood before the woman which was ready to be delivered for to devour her child as soon as it was born. Go to Zechariah chapter 3. Zechariah chapter 3. Come on, fingers, work with me. Take a part. Zechariah chapter 3. Zechariah chapter 3. And he shewed me Joshua the high priest standing before the angel of the Lord. And Satan standing at his right hand to resist him. And the Lord said unto Satan, The Lord rebuke thee, O Satan. Even the Lord that hath chosen Jerusalem rebuke thee. Is not this a brand plucked out of the fire? Hello? <laughs> now Joshua was clothed with filthy garments and stood before the angel. And he answered and spake unto those that stood before him, saying, Take away the filthy garments from him. And unto him he said, Behold, I have caused thine iniquity to pass from thee, and I will clothe thee with change of raiment. And I said, Let them set a fair mitre upon his head. So they set a fair mitre upon his head, and clothed him with garments. And the angel of the Lord stood by. And the angel of the Lord prophets protested unto Joshua, saying, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, If thou wilt walk in my ways, and if thou wilt keep my charge, then thou shalt, then thou shalt also judge my house, and shalt also keep my courts. And I will give thee places to walk among these that stand by, Hear now, O Joshua the high priest, thou and thy fellows that sit before thee, for they are men wondered at. For behold, I will bring forth my servant, the branch. Who's the branch? Our Lord Jesus Christ. For behold, the stone that I have laid before Joshua, upon one stone shall be seven eyes. Behold, I will engrave the engraving, I will engrave the gravings thereof, saith the Lord of hosts, and I will I and I will remove the iniquity of that land in one day, 
In that day, saith the Lord of hosts, ye shall call every man his neighbor under the vine and under the fig tree. Uh, under the fig tree. And what does our Lord Jesus Christ say? I am the vine, you are the branches. Under the fig tree, the fig tree, Israel. And also too, in verse 4, And the dragon stood by before the woman, which was ready to be delivered, for to devour her child as soon as it was born. Okay? Satan hates Israel. Satan hates the church of the living God because we are bone, we are his bones and his flesh. Okay? To the Jew first and also to the Greek. The Greek is a Gentile. Okay? But once the church of the living God is redeemed, resurrected, caught up for the time of, the Jacob, uh, of Jacob's trouble, it's going to, uh, our Lord is going to turn his attention to the Jews and pour his wrath upon this earth. And Satan is specifically during that time period is going to wreak such hell, devastation, and havoc upon the Jewish people that will make the Holocaust of the Jew seem like nothing. Okay? But one more thing on this. First Chronicles chapter 21. One verse. First Chronicles chapter 21. Just one verse. Verse 1. And Satan stood up against Israel and provoked David to number Israel. Now, you'll read elsewhere that it says God tempted or God provoked David. God allowed Satan to go against Israel to provoke David. Okay? God allowed Satan to do this. Okay? I've addressed that in another video, I believe. Uh, one of those um, uh, a little milk videos, which our brother, um, um, oh, Inside KJV, has the playlist on his channel. But God allowed Satan to do this. Okay, God did not do it. He allowed Satan to do it. But, and Satan stood up against Israel. Satan stood up against Israel. During the time of Jacob's trouble, whoop, hello. You get it? Okay, now verse 5. Okay. And she brought forth a man-child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron. And her child was caught up unto God and to his throne. Isaiah chapter 9. This, this ought to be very obvious to you, but we're going to go through this. Okay? Isaiah chapter 9. Verses 6 and 7. Oh, excuse me. Yeah. Uh, Isaiah chapter 9, verses 6 and 7. For unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulder. And his name shall be called capital W, Wonderful. Capital C, Counselor. The mighty God, the everlasting Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, Spirit, soul, and body. Holy Ghost is the Spirit. God the Father is the soul. The Word made flesh, our Lord Jesus Christ, the body. Okay? Spirit, soul, and body the Everlasting Father, the Prince, capital P, of Peace, capital P. Of course, Everlasting Father, capital F, Father, okay? Of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end. Upon the throne of David, his second coming, 
and upon his kingdom to order it, to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth even forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. Isaiah chapter 11, verses 1 under verse 9. And there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots, and the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the Spirit of wisdom and understanding, the Spirit of counsel and might, the Spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, and shall make him of quick understanding in the fear of the Lord, and he shall not judge after the sight of his eyes, neither reprove after the hearing of, the, of his ears. But with righteousness shall he judge the poor, and reprove with equity for the meek of the earth. And he shall smite the earth with the rod of his mouth. Sword cometh out of his mouth. I believe you read that in Revelation 19. Okay. And with the breath of his lips shall he slay the wicked. Just speaks and destroys the 200 million man army. Or the 100 million man army. Excuse me. Excuse me. And righteousness shall be the girdle of his loins and faithfulness the girdle of his reins. The wolf also shall dwell with the lamb and the leopard shall lie down with the kid and the calf and the young lion and the fatling together and the little child shall lead them. And the cow and the bear shall feed. Their young ones shall lie down together. And the lion shall eat straw like the ox. And the sucking child shall play on the hole of the asp. And the weaned child shall put his hand on the cockatrice den. They shall not hurt nor destroy in all my holy mountain. Zion. For the earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. Okay? Now, Joel chapter 3. Joel chapter 3. Joel chapter 3. Verses 9 under verse 17. Joel chapter 3, verses 9 under verse 17. Pro proclaim ye this among the Gentiles. Ah, excuse me. Joel chapter 3, verses 9 on to verse 17. Proclaim ye this among the Gentiles. Prepare war. Wake up the mighty men. Let all the men of war draw near. Let them come up. Beat your plows into swords and your pruning hooks into spears. Let the weak say, I am strong. Assemble yourselves and come, all ye heathen, and gather yourselves together round about. Thither cause the mighty ones to come down, O Lord. Let the heathen be wakened and come up to the valley of Jehoshaphat. For there will I sit to judge all the heathen round about. Put ye in the sickle, for the harvest is ripe. Come. Get you down, for the press is full. The fats overflow, for their wickedness is great. Multitudes. Multitudes in the valley of decision. For the day of the Lord is near in the valley of decision. The sun and the moon shall be darkened, and the stars shall withdraw their shining. Interesting. The Lord also shall roar out of Zion. And utter his voice from Jerusalem. Our Lord Jesus Christ as king. Okay. And the heavens and the earth shall shake. But the Lord will be the hope of his people. And the strength of the children of Israel. So shall ye know that I am the Lord your God dwelling in Zion, my holy mountain. Then shall Jerusalem be holy when God our Father is ruling and reigning on the throne in Jerusalem. Okay? Then shall Jerusalem be holy and there shall no stranger pass through her 
anymore. Okay? And now, Psalm 2. Psalm 2. Come on. Psalm 2. Put this in context with the time of Jacob's trouble. Think about it. Okay? Psalm 2. Why do the heathen rage? And the people imagine a vain thing? The kings of the earth set themselves, and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed. Christ means anointed. Jesus Christ. Jehovah saves. Christ, anointed. Anointed one. Okay? Against his anointed. Saying, Let us break their bands asunder and cast away their cords from us. He that sitteth in the heavens shall laugh. The Lord shall have them in derision. Then shall he speak unto them in his wrath and vex them in his sore displeasure. Yet have I set my king upon my holy hill of Zion. I will declare the decree. The Lord has said unto me, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. Ask of me, and I shall give thee the heathen for thine inheritance, and the uttermost parts of the earth for thy possession. Thou shalt break them with a rod of iron. Thou shalt dash them in pieces like a potter's vessel. Be wise now, therefore, O ye kings. Be instructed, ye judges of the earth. Serve the Lord with fear and rejoice with trembling. Kiss the son, lest he be angry, and ye perish from the way. When his wrath is kindled but a little, blessed are all they that put their trust in him. Mm. Okay? And of course, go back now to the book of Revelation. Revelation chapter 2. Revelation chapter 2. Verses 26 under verse 29. And he that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end. To him will I give power over the nations. And he shall rule them with a rod of iron. As the vessel of a potter shall they be broken to shivers, even as I received of my father. And I will give him the Morning star. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. Verse 5 in Revelation chapter 12. And she, Israel, brought forth a man child, our Lord Jesus Christ, who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron. And her child was caught up unto God and to his throne. Caught up. Caught up. Go to John chapter 6. John chapter 6. John chapter 6, one verse. Oh, let's actually read verses 61 on to verse 65. Okay? Verse 61 on to verse 65 in John chapter 6. When Jesus, and he's rebuking these, you know, he's telling these people about the, you know, flesh and blood. You know, he told them to eat my flesh and drink my blood, which the Catholics take literally. They're cannibals, right? And here our Lord is telling them, it's like, whoa. When Jesus knew in himself that his disciples murmured at it, he said unto them, Doth this offend you? Look at this verse. Look at this verse. What and if ye shall see the Son of Man ascend up where he was before? It is the Spirit that quickeneth. 
the flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit, and they are life. But there are some of you that believe not. For Jesus knew from the beginning who they were that believed not, and who should betray him. And he said, Therefore said I unto you, that no man can come unto me except it were given unto him of my Father. Okay? Okay? And now, also, go to Acts chapter 1. And looking at uh, Revelation 12, verse 5 again, And her child was caught up unto God and to his throne. Acts chapter 1. Acts chapter 1, verses 1 on to verse 14. The former treaties have I made, O Theophilus, of all that Jesus began both to do and teach, until the day in which he was taken up, after that he, through the Holy Ghost, had given commandments unto the apostles whom he had chosen, to whom also he shewed himself alive after his passion, by many infallible proofs, being seen of them forty days, and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God, spiritual kingdom. The kingdom of heaven had been put off because the Jews rejected the kingdom of heaven. Okay? But now, our Lord Jesus Christ died, buried, and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. He shed his blood on the cross to make the perfect atonement for sin. Okay? This is this dispensation, the time of the Gentiles. But the kingdom of God had to be first offered unto the Jewish people. Okay? This was this dispensation, the time of the Gentiles. Yes. But it's to the Jew first. And also to the Greek. Greek is a Gentile. Okay? Understand that. Let's continue. And being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which, saith he, ye have heard of me. For John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. When they therefore were come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, wilt thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? And he said unto them, It is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father hath put in his own power. But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And ye shall be my witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. Note that what he says in Jerusalem. Jews, and in Judea, and in Samaria, and unto the uttermost parts of the earth, to the Jew first, and also to the Gentile. And when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven, as he went up, behold, Two men stood by them in white apparel, which also said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. The second coming. Then returned they unto Jerusalem, from the mount called Olivet, which is from Jerusalem a Sabbath day's journey. And when they were come in, they went up into an upper room where abode both Peter and James and John and Andrew, Philip and Thomas and Bartholomew and Matthew, James the son of Alphaeus and Shimon Zelotes and Judas the brother of James. These all continued with one accord in prayer and supplication with the women and Mary the mother of Jesus and with his brethren. So you see, caught up, ascended. See that? And Acts chapter 7. The turning point. This was already the time of the Gentiles. But it had to, the uh, kingdom of God had to be first offered unto the Jews. We know through the scriptures, through prophecy, that 
they were going to reject that. And that I will bring you to jealousy with a foolish nation, talked about in the book of uh, Deuteronomy. Okay? It was prophesied that the Jews were going to reject the kingdom of heaven. Our Lord had to offer it first, or else he isn't a just and righteous God. Okay? They rejected that. Died, buried, and rose again. Third day, according to the scriptures, shed his blood on the cross to make an atonement for sins. Okay? Perfect atonement. Kingdom of God being first offered unto the Jews, the spiritual kingdom. Okay? The kingdom of God. Okay? Had to first be offered unto the Jews. They rejected it nationally as a people in Acts chapter 7. Now, this is where hyperdispensationalists get it whoop, all messed up. We're not going to touch on that. But, Look in Acts chapter 7, verse 56. Uh, let's read verses 55 and verse 56 in Acts chapter 7. But he, Stephen, being full of the Holy Ghost, looked up steadfastly into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing on the right hand of God. And he said, Behold, I see the heavens open and the Son of Man standing on the right hand of God. Okay? The heavens open and he was standing ready to come back. Okay? Ready to come back. But we have a prophesy that the Jewish people were going to reject the gospel. Okay? But he saw the Lord standing. Okay? Caught up. Uh, are you getting it? Verse 5 in uh, Revelation chapter 12. And her child was caught up unto God to his throne. And he was standing at the right hand of God. Okay? You get it? Caught up? Ascended? Talking about Jesus Christ? Okay? Now, look at verse 6. And the woman fled into the wilderness where she hath a place prepared of God, that they should feed her there a thousand two hundred and three score days. Matthew chapter 24. Matthew chapter 24. Matthew chapter 24, which is talking about the time of Jacob's trouble. Matthew chapter 24, verses 13, on to verse 28. Okay? Matthew chapter 24, verses 13 on to verse 28. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. You have to endure unto the end during the time of Jacob's trouble. Today, in this dispensation, the time of the Gentiles, you don't have to endure the, to the end of anything. If you're saved, born again, you know, converted, you are sealed unto the day of redemption. During the time of Jacob's trouble, murder, it's not there. It's the only ones that are sealed during that time are the 144,000 Jews. Otherwise, eternal security is not there for the time of Jacob's trouble. Let's continue. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations. The king is coming back. And then shall the end come. When ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet, stand in the holy place. Whoso readeth, let him understand. The son of perdition, come and stand in the rebuilt temple. Okay? Then let them which be in Judea, in Judea, flee into the mountains. Let him which is on the housetop not come down to take anything out of his house. Neither let him which is in the field return back to take his clothes. And woe unto them that are with child, and to them that give suck in those days. But pray ye that your flight be not in the <laughs> winter, neither on the Sabbath day. Okay? Sabbath day is going to return during the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay? 
For then shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time. No, nor ever shall be. And except those days should be shortened, there should no flesh be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. And the elect's sake is referring on to the Jewish people during the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay? The elect's sake, the Jews. Okay? Then if any man shall say unto you, Lo, here is Christ, or there, believe it not. For there shall arise false Christs, and false prophets, and shall shew great signs and wonders. Because the Jews re require a sign, remember? Insomuch that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. Behold, I have told you before. Wherefore, if they shall say unto you, Behold, he is in the desert, go not forth. Behold, he is in the secret chambers, believe it not. For as lightning cometh out of the east, and shineth even unto the west, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For wheresoever the carcass is, there will the eagles be gathered together. Mm. And also, too, we have to note something. In Revelation chapter four, uh, 12, verse 6, that they should feed her there, Israel, there for a thousand two hundred and three score days. Now, you have to remember something, brethren. There are two calendars. The Gregorian, which all of our stuff is based off of, and the Hebrew calendar, which is the lunar calendar. And according to the Hebrew lunar calendar, their years are three hundred are anywhere from three hundred and fifty three days to three hundred and fifty five days. The Gregorian calendar is three hundred and sixty five days a year, or three hundred and sixty four, whatever. Okay, there are three hundred and fifty five days in the Hebrew lunar calendar, and when you do the math according to the Hebrew calendar, right here that they should feed her there a thousand two hundred and three score days. According to the Hebrew lunar calendar, that is 3.54 years. Three and a half years. Okay? Now you've got to remember, the first three years of the time of Jacob's trouble is not going to be a peaceful time. Okay? The ant the, almost did it. The son of perdition, the man of sin, is going to go forth, conquering and to conquer. Okay, and the judgments, devastation, destruction being upon the earth. Okay, the first three years of the time of Jacob's trouble is not going to be a peaceful time. It's not. And then once the third temple is finished, the son of perdition, the abomination that maketh desolate, stand in the holy place. And so read it, let him understand. I'm the one that you're sacrificing to. Once the Jews see that and realize that, as we just saw in Matthew chapter 24, they're going to run. They're going to run. They're going to flee. See? Okay? Now, before we get to verses 7, on to verse 9, okay? Before we get to that, is it not painfully obvious that from verses 1 on to verse 5 is clearly talking about the Jews, Israel, and our Lord Jesus Christ. Is that not obvious? Verse 6. We did the tie-in with Matthew chapter 24. With the accounting of the Hebrew lunar calendar. Okay? Now. 
Now, here is where I was in error. Okay? And I'm going to show you what tripped me up. Hoping that you, in seeing this, if you make it this far, will not make the same error that I did. Okay? Now, verse 7. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. And the dragon fought with his angels. Go to Isaiah chapter 27. Isaiah chapter 27. Okay? Isaiah chapter 27. Isaiah chapter 27, verses 1 and verse 6. In that day, the Lord with his sword, great and strong sword, shall punish Leviathan, the piercing serpent, even Leviathan, that crooked serpent. And he shall slay the dragon that is in the sea. And you can tie that into Job chapter 41, talking about Leviathan. He's the king over all the children of pride, clearly referring on to Satan. Okay. In that day, sing ye unto her a vineyard of red wine. I, the Lord, do keep it. I will water it every moment, lest any hurt it. I will keep it night and day. Fury is not in me. Who would set the briars and thorns against me in battle? Like Satan and his devils, his angels, uh, thought that they could beat the Lord and his armies. <laughs> I will go through them. I would burn them together. Or let him take hold of my strength that he may make peace with me, and he shall make peace with me. He shall cause them that come of Jacob to take root. Israel shall blossom in blood and bud, and fill the face of the world with fruit. Okay? Now, I had said in a previous video that I had believed that, verse 7, that war in heaven had already happened. I'm going to get to that. Now go to verse 8. And okay, let's read verses uh, 7 and 8 again in context here. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought and his angels. His angels. Look at verse 4. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven and did cast them to the earth. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought with the dra fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought and his angels, and prevailed not. Neither was there a place found any more in heaven. Okay, I believe that right there where it says the stars of heaven are re reference unto angels, and you cross reference it with verse seven. Okay, and prevailed not. Neither was there a place found any more in heaven. Right here. Here's what tripped me up. And the great dragon was cast out. That old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world, he was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Those who followed him, who he drew in with his tail, okay, his fallen angels that uh, followed him, that sided with Satan, okay, during the war in heaven, which has not yet happened, okay? But here's what tripped me up, okay? And the great dragon was cast out. And oh, by the way, it says here um, in verse 3, and there appeared another wonder in heaven, and behold, a great dragon. Who is this dragon? Verse 9, and that great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan. Okay? The dragon is Satan. Okay? Which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Cast out. This is what tripped me up. Let me show you this. Go to Ezekiel chapter 28. Ezekiel chapter 28. 
Ezekiel, come on, right? Work with me, fingers. Ezekiel chapter 28, verse 16. In Ezekiel chapter 28. Ezekiel chapter 28. Look at this. Look at this and pay attention. By the multitude of thy merchandise, they have filled the midst of thee with violence, and thou hast sinned. Therefore will I cast thee as profane out of the mountain of God, and I will destroy thee, O covering cherub, from the midst of the stones of fire. And right here, let's read verse 17. Thine heart was lifted up because of thy beauty. Thou hast corrupted thy wisdom by reason of thy brightness. I will cast thee to the ground, and I will lay thee before kings, that they may behold thee. Cast thee as profane out of the mountain of God, out of Jerusalem, okay, out of Zion, out of his presence, okay? Thine heart was lifted up because of thy beauty. Thou hast cast thy, thou hast corrupted thy wisdom by reason of thy brightness. I will cast thee to the ground. I will lay thee before kings that they may behold thee. Okay? And look at verse 9. He was cast out into the earth. Okay? That's what tripped me up. I was equating this being cast out into the earth with what is here in Ezekiel chapter 28, verse 16 and 17. But here's the thing, okay? Go to Isaiah chapter 14 now. Isaiah chapter 14. Okay? Isaiah chapter 14. Come on, fingers, work with me. Come on, work with me, Jesus. Work with me. Isaiah chapter 14, verses 12 on to verse 15. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning, cast thee as profane out of the mountain of God? Cast thee, what does it say? I closed my place there in Ezekiel chapter 28. In verse 16, I will cast thee as profane out of the mountain of God. I will destroy thee, O covering cherub, from the midst of the stones of fire. And verse 17, I will cast thee to the ground. I will lay thee before kings that they may behold thee. Okay? And look at uh, back to um, Isaiah chapter 14, verse 12. How art thou fallen from heaven? O Lucifer, son of morning, how art thou cut down to the ground which didst weaken nations? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the cloud. I will be like, like the Most High. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell, to the sides of the pit. Okay? And also now, Luke 10, Luke 10, verse 8, Luke 10, verse 8, Luke 10, verse 8, one verse, Luke 10, verse 8, oops, do I have the right reference here? Hold on one second, brethren. <laughs> Sorry about that if you saw that. <laughs> it's verse 18. Luke 10, verse 18. And he said, this is Jesus, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. You see that? Verse 18 in Luke chapter 10. And he said unto them, him being Jesus, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. So, brethren, what tripped me up, oh, excuse me, 
in verse 9, thinking that this already happened. Oh, beg your pardon. I was, uh, I was equating this being cast out as mean as equating that onto Lucifer's fall because he sinned. That was my error. That was my error. Okay. Satan has fall, uh, fell from heaven as lightning. Yes. Okay. But we also know in Job chapters 1. Okay. Go to Job. Go to Job chapter 1. Job chapter 1. Come on. Finish. Job chapter 1. Verse 6. Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came also among them. Okay? And in Job chapter 2, verse 1, And there was a day when the sons of God, angels, came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came also among them to present himself before the Lord. And then you would read in Job chapter 1 and Job chapter 2 how he accused Job, being the accuser of the brethren. Satan. And we all you will also see that Satan needs God's permission to afflict any of those who trust on him who are his. See. Okay? You see that? Alright? So we know that Satan is up in heaven acting as the accuser of the brethren. Okay, and we also know that he is walking to and fro in the earth and going up and down in it. That he walks upon the earth. Okay, but he is not cast out of heaven. Not cast out. Okay. I had said that I believed that this had already happened. It has not obviously happened yet. This is a future thing. Okay, where Satan is going to be cast out of heaven. Cast out. Because when we get caught up, as Brother Brian said and says, we, I believe we're going to see uh, Satan up there reporting up to him, okay? Because remember, Satan is not omnipresent, okay? He can't be everywhere at the same time. He is going to be in the son of perdition. He is. He's going to be in the son of perdition, okay? Satan himself, okay? But this, brethren, has not happened yet. And what caught me up, what tripped me up was the casting out. Okay? Satan fell from heaven because there was pride in him. He sinned. And because of that, he was cast out as profane. But he was not cast out of the presence of the Lord permanently. He was not. Okay? Because, now let's read continuing. Verses 10 under verse 12 in Revelation chapter 12. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now has come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. The accuser of the brethren. And he was cast out. Here in Revelation chapter 12. Cast out of heaven. Okay? Okay. Him being, uh, he fell from heaven and he was cast as profane because he fell. But here, in verse 9, he was cast out. Cast out of heaven. Get out of here. The accuser of the brethren. And look what happens. Okay? And I heard a loud voice in heaven, a loud voice saying in heaven, Now has come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before God day and night. So see, me saying to you that this war in heaven has already happened was an error. And what was tripping me up was I was equating right there, verse 9, the casting out of Satan during the time of Jacob's trouble with him being cast out. As profane. In that he fell. That is what I was tripped up on. That was my error. That's what I was being confused with. That was my error. And dear brethren, sisters, church of the living God. You make it this far and I hope you do. I repent of that. 
I was in error. Forgive me of that. This is a future event. It is. It is, clearly. But like I said, what was tripping me up was right there. Right there. In verse 9. And the great dragon was cast out. When, as before, he, he, he fell from heaven. And he was cast out as profane. And the Lord says, I will cast thee before kings. In Isaiah chapter 14. Okay? And our Lord said, I saw Satan. Fall, um, fall as lightning. Okay? I already read that, but... Okay? That was my error, brethren. The cast out. That's what confused me. This is a future event. Look at, look at me. Do not make the same error I did. Okay? This is a future event. Satan being cast out of heaven. Okay? Remember, Satan's going to and fro, to and fro, going to the throne, reporting to our Lord, okay? He's going to be within the son of perdition, okay? We know that, but at the same time, he's going to be get, uh, going up to report unto the Lord until this time, okay? So this is a future event. And like I said, what was tripping me up was, and the great dragon was cast out. And I, we already looked at those verses. Okay? Please forgive me of that error. And the Lord corrected me through the scriptures on this. So let's continue now. Okay? Don't make the same error I did. Learn from this. Okay? Let's continue. Verse 11, and here's more um, evidence showing that this is a future event. And when I had said that, immediately the Lord's like, Brad, we got to go through this. We got other things going on here, which I'm not going to talk about yet. But, okay, the Lord corrected me through the scriptures. Forgive me. Now let's continue now. Okay? And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb. And by the word of their testimony. And they love not their lives unto the death. Therefore rejoice ye heavens. And ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth. And of the sea. For the devil has come down unto you. Having great wrath. Because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. Now I also in that video. Had said the short time. Is the short time. The uh, short time. Time span that the the earth has been around, the uh, six years that the earth has been here? No. Okay? The short time. Hmm? Is it the time, uh, what time is the short time? The short time is when he's been kicked out of heaven. Because he know, because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. Now think about think about this, brethren. Think about this. Okay. The devil gets cast out of heaven here in Revelation chapter 12. Okay? And it says here in uh Revelation chapter six uh in Revelation 12, verse 6, that the woman will be uh 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 where she hath a place prepared of God, that they should feed her there a thousand two hundred and three score days, which uh, equals to three point five years. Okay, according to the Hebrew lunar calendar. Okay, and when Satan, son of perdition, the beast, goes into the rebuilt temple, says, "Here I am, I'm God." Okay, that time forth, he hath but a short time. And such persecution is going to come upon the Jewish people that it's going to make the Holocaust look like nothing. Because he has great wrath. Okay? Now let's look at verse 13. And when the dragon saw that he was cast onto the earth, not coming back up to heaven to give an account, okay? He persecuted the woman which brought forth the man child. Again, who is the woman? Israel. That brought forth the man-child. 
Daniel chapter 8. Daniel chapter 8. Daniel chapter 8, verses 23 on to verse 20, 25. Daniel chapter 8, verses 23 on to verse 25. And in the latter time of their kingdom, when the transgressors are come to the full, a king of fierce countenance and understanding dark sentences shall stand up, and his power shall be mighty, but not by his own power. And he shall destroy wonderfully, and shall prosper and practice, and shall destroy the mighty and the holy people, the Jews. Okay? And through his policy also he shall cause craft to prosper in his hand, and he shall magnify himself in his heart, and by peace shall destroy many. He shall also stand up against the prince of princes, but he shall be broken without hand. Stand up against the prince of princes, and he shall be broken without hand, and by peace shall destroy many. Remember, after we, the church and living God, are redeemed, caught up, resurrected, Son of Perdition is going to go forth conquering and to conquer in the name of peace. And through peace he shall destroy many. Okay? And also too, looking back at Revelation 12, verse 13, And when the dragon Satan saw that he was cast onto the earth, he persecuted the woman Israel that brought forth the man-child. Our Lord Jesus Christ came of Israel. He is a Jew. Okay? Okay? Go to James chapter 5. James chapter 5. James chapter 5. Verses 7. On to verse 11. Okay? When, he does, when Satan gets cast out, it's going to have three and a half years roughly. Right? A very short time. Very short time. He's going to be very angry and he's going to go right after the Jewish people. Like I said, if you're Jewish and you if you watch this, oh boy, Satan's gonna be coming after you. James chapter five, verse seven, one to verse eleven. Be patient, therefore, brethren, unto the coming of the Lord. Behold, the husbandman waiteth for the precious fruit of the earth, and hath long patience for it. Until he received the early and latter rain. Latter rain. Future blessing for Israel. Be also patient. Establish your hearts. For the coming of the Lord draweth nigh. Remember. Who is the book of James written for? Or written to? James chapter 1. Verse 1. We already read it. James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the twelve tribes which are scattered abroad, greeting. Okay? Okay? There, there are things that cross dispensational lines for us today within the book of James. Yes, but primarily this and the book of Hebrews are books specifically for the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay? Specifically for the time of Jacob's trouble. In the collection of books of the New Testament. Okay? Verse 8 in James chapter 5. Be ye also patient. Establish your hearts. For the coming of the Lord draweth nigh. In that time period when he hath but a short time. Satan hath but a short time. Okay? Grudge not once one against another, brethren. Lest ye be condemned. Behold, the judge standeth before the door. Waiting to come back. Ready to come back soon. Okay. Take, my brethren, the prophets, who have spoken in the name of the Lord for an example of suffering, affliction, and of patience. Uh, behold, we count them happy which endure. Ye have heard the patience of Job, and have seen the end of the Lord. That the Lord is very pitiful and of tender mercy. And again, correlating Job 
with the book of Revelation, the time of Jacob's trouble, it all fits. Like a glove. Okay? So, in verse 13, who is the dragon going after? Going after the Jews. Okay? Verse 14. And to the woman were given two wings of an eagle, that she might fly into the wilderness, into her place, where she is nursed for a time and times and half a time from the face of the serpent. Okay? And the woman were given two wings of a great eagle, that she might fly into the wilderness, running away, where she is nursed for a time and times and half a time from the face of the serpent. Exodus chapter 19. Exodus chapter 19. Exodus chapter 19, verses 1 and verse 6. Exodus chapter 19, verses 1 under verse 6. In the third month, when the children of Israel were gone forth out of the land of Egypt, the same day came they into the wilderness of Sinai. For they were departed from Rephidim, and were come to the desert of Sinai, and had pitched in the wilderness, and there Israel camped before the mount. And Moses went up unto God... And the Lord called unto him out of the mountain, saying, Thus shalt thou say to the house of Jacob, and tell the children of Israel, Ye have seen what I did unto the Egyptians, unto the world. Okay? And how I bear you, how I bear you on eagles' wings and brought you unto myself. Now, therefore, if, oh boy, if ye will obey my voice indeed and keep my covenant, then ye shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people. The Jew is the apple of God's eye, remember? For all the earth is mine. And ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. Deuteronomy chapter 32. Deuteronomy chapter 32. Verses 9 under verse 12. Deuteronomy chapter 32, verses 9 on to verse 12. For the Lord's portion is his people. Jacob is the lot of his inheritance. He found him in a desert land and in the waste howling wilderness. I led him about. He instructed him. He kept him as the apple of his eye. As an eagle stirreth up her nest, fluttereth over her young, spreadeth abroad her wings, taketh them, beareth them on her wings. So the Lord alone did lead him. And there was no strange God in him. Let's keep reading on to verse 14. He made him ride on high places of the earth, that he might eat the increase of the fields, and he made him to suck honey out of the rock, and oil out of the flint rock, flint rock, butter of kine, and milk of sheep, with fat of lambs, and rams of the breed of Bashan, and goats, with the fat of kidneys of wheat, and thou didst drink the pure blood of the grape. Isaiah chapter 40. Isaiah chapter 40. Isaiah chapter 40, verses 25 and verse 31. Isaiah chapter 40, verses 25 and verse 40, uh, 31. To whom then will ye liken me, or shall I be equal, saith the Holy One? 
Lift up your eyes on high, and behold, who hath created these things, and bring that bringeth out their host by number. He calleth them all, he calleth them all by names, he calleth them all by names, by the greatness of his might. For that he is strong in power, not one faileth. Why sayest thou, O Jacob, and speakest, O Israel, my way is hid from the Lord, and my judgment is passed over from my God? Hast thou not known, hast thou not heard, that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is weary? There is no searching of his understanding. He giveth power to the faint. Okay, note this. He giveth power to the faint, and to them that have no might in and act. Let me read that again. <laughs> he giveth power to the faint, and to them that have no might, he increaseth strength. Even the youths shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Uh, not to mention, too, you got to remember, the eagle was an unclean bird. Keep that in mind, huh? And go to Daniel chapter 9. Daniel chapter 9. Not Hosea, Brad. Daniel chapter 9. Daniel chapter 9, verses 24 on to verse 27. Okay? Daniel chapter 9, verses 24 on to verse 27. Let's read verse 14 again in uh, Revelation chapter 12. And to the woman were given two wings of a great eagle, that she might fly into the wilderness, into her place, where she is nursed for a time and times and half a time, from the face of the serpent. Okay? Daniel chapter 9, verses 24 and verse 27. Seventy weeks are determined upon thy people and upon thy holy city, the Jews. Jerusalem. Okay? To make the to finish the transgression and to make an end of sins and to make reconciliation for iniquity and to bring in everlasting righteousness and to seal up the vision and prophecy and to anoint the most holy. Know therefore and understand from the going forth of the commandment to restore and to build Jerusalem unto the Messiah, the prince, shall be seven weeks and threescore and two weeks. The street shall be built again and the wall even in troublous times. They're going to be rebuilding the temple during the time of Jacob's trouble, I believe. And unlike many, I believe that they can get that uh, temple built in quite a hurry. Quite a hurry. Okay? Quite a hurry. And after three score and two weeks shall Messiah be cut off, but not for himself. And the people of the prince that shall come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary, and the end thereof shall be with a flood. Note that. And unto the end of the war desolations are determined. And he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. And in the midst of the week he shall cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease. And for the overspreading of abominations he shall make it desolate even on to the consummation, and that determined shall be poured upon the desolate. Okay? Now look at this in verse 26. And the end thereof shall be with a flood. Revelation chapter 12, verse 15. And the serpent cast out of his mouth water as a flood after the woman, that he might cause her to be carried away with the flood. Revelation chapter 17, verse 15. Okay? Revelation chapter 17, verse 15. Out of his mouth pursued water as a, came water as a flood. Okay? And we just saw in Daniel uh, with a flood. Check this out. 
Revelation 17, verse 15. Excuse me. And he saith unto me, The waters which thou sawest, where the whore sitteth, Roman Catholicism, Mystery Babylon, are peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues. Remember how we just looked in Matthew chapter 24, where he said there will be many false Christs, saying, there's Christ, lo, there he here. Let's go there. Let's go there. Back to Matthew chapter 24. Okay? Let's go there. Matthew chapter 24 again. Okay? Matthew chapter 24. Okay? Verses 23. On to verse 28. Then if any man shall say unto you, Lo, here is Christ, or there, believe it not, for there shall arise false Christ's anointed ones, okay? And false prophets, and shall, shall shew great signs and wonders, insomuch that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. Behold, I have told you before. Wherefore, if they shall say unto you, Behold, he is in the desert, go not forth. Behold, he is in the secret chambers, believe it not. For as lightning cometh out of the east, he beheld Satan as lightning, fall from heaven, okay? And shineth even unto the west, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For wheresoever the carcass is, there will the eagles be gathered together. Very interesting. Okay? Now go to Isaiah chapter 3. Isaiah chapter 3. What is Satan going to cast out of his mouth? People. Waters. People. Because we, we have God's promise in the book of Genesis that he will not destroy the earth with a flood. He said he would never do that again. Okay? It's going to be a burn with fire. Okay? But, coming out of his mouth, all these false prophets, deceiving people, peoples. Okay? Isaiah chapter 3. Isaiah, come on. Isaiah chapter 3, verses 12 on to verse 15. And this is uh, this is instruction and in righteousness for us today. Yes, it is. Okay? But note this. Isaiah chapter 3, verses 12 on to verse 15. As for my people, children are their oppressors, and women rule over them. And for our instruction and righteousness for today here in America, hello, not going to get off on that. Let's continue. O my people, they which lead thee cause thee to err and destroy the ways, the way of thy paths. The Lord standeth up to plead and standeth to judge the people. Remember what we saw in Acts chapter 7? Hold your place here. Acts chapter 7. Okay? Acts chapter 7. Acts chapter 7, verses 55 and verse 56. But he, being full of the Holy Ghost, looked up steadfastly into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing on the right hand of God and said, Behold, I see he the heavens open and the Son of Man standing on the right hand of God. Go back to Isaiah chapter 3. Verse 13, And the Lord standeth up to plead, and standeth to judge the people. The Lord will enter into judgment with the ancients of his people, and the princes thereof. For ye have eaten up the vineyard, the spoil of the poor is in your houses. What mean ye that ye beat my people to pieces, and grind the faces of the poor? Set the Lord God of hosts. Okay? All right. And now go to Jeremiah chapter 23. Jeremiah chapter 23. Jeremiah chapter 23, verses 9 on to verse 17.
Let's reread very quickly Revelation 15, uh, 12, verse 15 again. And the serpent cast out of his mouth water as a flood after the woman, that he might cause her to be carried away with the flood. Jeremiah chapter 23, verses 9 on to verse 17. Mine heart within me is broken because of the prophets. All my bones shake. I am like a drunken man, and like a man whose, whom wine hath overcome, because of the Lord, and because of the words of his holiness. For the land is full of adulterers. For because of swearing, the land mourneth. The pleasant places of the wilderness are dried up, and their course is evil, and their force is not right. For both prophet and priest are profane. Yea, in my house have I found their wickedness, saith the Lord. Wherefore their way shall be unto them as slippery ways in the darkness. They shall be driven on, and fall therein. For I will bring evil upon them, even the year of their visitation, saith the Lord. I have seen folly in the prophets of Samaria. They prophesied in Baal and caused my people Israel to err. I have seen also the prophets of Jerusalem. I have seen also in the prophets of Jerusalem a horrible thing. They commit adultery and walk in lies. They strengthen also the hands of evildoers that none doth return from his wickedness. They are they are all of them unto me as Sodom and the inhabitants thereof as Gomorrah. Therefore, thus saith the Lord of hosts concerning the prophets, Behold, I will feed them with wormwood and make them drink the water of gall. For from the prophets of Jerusalem is profaneness gone forth into all the land. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, Hearken not unto the words of the prophets that prophesy unto you. They make you vain. They speak a vision of their own heart and not out of the mouth of the Lord. They say still unto them that despise me, the Lord has said, ye shall have peace. And they say unto everyone that walketh after the imagination of his own heart, no evil shall come upon you. Okay? Okay? Now, verse 16 in Revelation chapter 12. Okay? And the earth helped the woman. And the earth opened her mouth and swallowed up the flood which the dragon cast out of his mouth. Remember in the rebellion of Korah? When the people uh, rebelled against the, against the Lord and uh, accused Moses and Aaron of you've brought uh, evil upon us. You take too much upon you. That kind of stuff. And the earth opened up and swallowed up those guys in the rebellion of Korah. Remember that? Remember that? Okay. And the earth helped the woman. Look, go to Revelation 16, verses 17 on to verse 21. Okay. And the seventh angel poured out his vial into the air, and there came... A great voice out of the temple of heaven from the throne saying it is done and there were voices and thunders and lightnings and there was a great earthquake such as was as was not since men were upon the earth so mighty an earthquake and so great and the great city was divided into three parts and the cities of the nations fell and great Babylon came into remembrance before God to give unto her the cup of the wine of the fierceness of her of his wrath and every island fled away, and the mountains were not found. And there fell upon men a great hail out of heaven, every stone about the weight of a talent. And men blasphemed God because of the plague of the hail, for the plague thereof was exceeding great. There going to be earthquakes. And for what we know, it says the earth helped the woman, and the earth opened her mouth and swallowed up the flood, which the dragon cast out of the out of his mouth. Okay, remember the rebellion of Corinth when the earth opened up asunder and all those guys fell down and the earth closed up on them. Okay, earthquakes, devastation, destruction. Okay, okay, but now verse 17. Now, verse 17, we're almost done. 
I had to do this. Everything took uh, second place to getting this done. Okay? And the dragon was wroth with the woman. Satan was angry with Israel. And went to make war with the remnant of her seed. Which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus. Okay? And the dragon was wroth with the woman, Israel. And went to make war with the remnant of her seed. Go to Genesis chapter 3. Go to Genesis chapter 3. All the way towards the beginning. Genesis chapter 3. Verse 15. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman. And between thy seed and her seed. And it shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel, her seed. Her seed. Revelation chapter 12, verse 17. And the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed. The remnant of her seed. Who came of Israel? Our Lord Jesus Christ. See? Genesis chapter 3, verse 15 again. I will put enmity between thee and the woman. Okay? The woman, Israel. And between thy seed, Satan, and her seed. And it shall bruise thy head, her seed, Bruise the head of Satan, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Who is that heel? His heel, Jesus Christ. This is how Genesis chapter 3 15 is a prophecy of the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. The very first prophecy in Scripture of the Lord Jesus Christ, of the Messiah. And the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus. And remember here where I said uh, with the, the hinge, the thing about the seed? Okay. Uh, uh, but rem never mind. But the remnant of her seed. Okay? Our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? The woman is Israel. The dragon is Satan. And compare that with Genesis chapter 3, 15. I will put enmity between thee and the woman, between Satan and the woman, the woman Israel, and between thy seed, Satan and his lies, and her seed. What is her seed? What came, what came from Israel? Huh? What came from Israel? Salvation is of the Jews. Hmm? I am not sent, but unto the lost sheep of Israel. Okay? 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 Go to John chapter 15. John chapter 15. John chapter 15. Verses 16 on to verse 23. Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you, and ordained you that ye should go forth, that ye should go and bring forth fruit. Oh, beg your pardon. And that your fruit should remain, and whatsoever ye shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it you. These things I command you, that ye love one another. Now, right here, this is instruction and in righteousness for us today as well. Goes through the uh, dispensational lines, okay? 
If the world hates you, you know, ye know that it hated me before it hated you. If ye were of the world, the world would love his own. But because ye are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hateth you. And applying that to the Jews during the time of Jacob's trouble, okay? Okay? Remember the word that I said unto you, the servant is not greater than his Lord. If they have persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they have kept my saying, they will keep yours also. And just imagine what it might be like for a Jew during that time who comes to faith on his Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, their King, the Son of David. When the devil knows he hath but a short time, boom, wow! But all these things will they do unto you for my name's sake, because they know not him that sent me. If I had not, because they uh, sent, okay. If I had not come and spoken unto them, they had not had sin, but now they have no cloak for their sin. He that hateth me hateth my father also. And remember, he who touches the Jew touches the apple of God's eye. And during this time period, at this time, Satan's going after the Jews. Okay? Now go to James chapter 2. But really quickly, Okay, which in verse 17 in uh, Genesis chapter 12, which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus. James chapter 2. James chapter 2. James chapter 2. Verses 14 on to verse 26. You got to remember, what, what, what did we just read? In verse 17 in Je uh, Revelation chapter 12. Which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. James chapter 2 verses 14 on to verse 26. What doth the prophet, my brethren, though a man say he hath faith, and have not works, can faith save him? If a brother or a sister be naked and destitute of daily food, and one of you say unto them, Depart in peace, be ye warmed and filled, notwithstanding ye give them not those things which are needful to the body, what doth it profit? Even so, even so, faith, if it hath not works, is dead being alone. Yea, a man may say, Thou hast faith, and I have works. Shew me thy faith without thy works, and I will shew thee my faith by my works. Thou believest there is one God, thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble. Okay? But wilt thou know, O vain man, that faith without works is dead. Now see, very quickly, the dispensational difference. People like to say that James and that Paul and James were speaking back to back, speaking the same thing. That's nuts. No, that is not that. No, oh, no. This is for a different dispensation. James chapter 2. This is talking, uh, this is for the time of Jacob's trouble. Yes, there are things that cross dispensational lines in the book of James. Yes. There is instruction in righteousness. Yes. But this is specifically for the Jews during the time of Jacob's trouble. And it, it says it right away in James chapter 1, verse 1. Okay? And people will point to this and try to spiritualize this, saying that Paul and James are talking back to back, saying the same thing. No, they are not. No, they are not. This, what we're looking at, is for a different dispensation. The time of Jacob's trouble, brethren. Let's continue. Verse 21. 
Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he had offered Isaac his son upon the altar? Seest thou, seest thou how faith wrought with his works, and by works was his faith, and by works was faith made perfect? Are faith made perfect by works today? In the time of Jacob's trouble, yes. And the scripture was fulfilled which saith, Abraham believed God, and it was imputed unto him for righteousness, and he was called the friend of God's of God, excuse me. Ye see then how that by works a man is justified, and not by faith only. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works lest any man should boast. And we see that a man is not justified by the deeds of the law, but by faith. Two different things. Written for two different dispensations. Do you get it? All right. Let's finish this. Likewise, also was not Rahab the harlot justified by works when she had received the messengers and had sent them another out another way? For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. Revelation 12, verse 17, which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. Hmm. Hebrews chapter 10. Hebrews chapter 10. Verse 25 on to verse 39. In Hebrews chapter 10. Verse 25. Oh, actually, let us, uh, let us read verses 23 on to verse 39. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful that promised. And let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another, and so much the more as you see the day approaching. And this is going to be very significant during the time of Jacob's trouble, because that's all that they're going to have. See, that's all they're going to have themselves during the time of Jacob's trouble. Let's continue. For if we sin willfully after that we receive, after that we have received the knowledge of the truth, there remaineth no more sacrifices for sins, but a certain fearful looking for of judgment and fiery indignation, which shall devour the adversaries. He that despised Moses' law died without mercy under two or three witnesses. How much more, how much sore punishment suppose ye shall he be thought worthy who hath trodden underfoot the Son of God and hath counted the blood of the covenant wherewith he was sanctified an unholy thing and hath done despite unto the Spirit of grace? For we know him for we know him that hath said, Vengeance belongeth unto me, I will recompense, saith the Lord. And again, the Lord shall judge his people. It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. But call to remembrance the former days in which, after ye were illuminated, ye endured a great flight of afflictions, partly whilst ye were made a gazing stock both by reproaches and afflictions, and partly whilst ye became companions of them that were so used. We're going to get to that in Hebrews 11. Hold on. For ye had compassion of me and my bonds, and took joyfully the spoiling of your goods, knowing, knowing in yourselves that ye have in heaven a better and enduring substance. Cast not away, therefore, your confidence, which hath great recompense of reward. For ye have need of patience, 
that after ye have done the will of God, ye might receive the promise. For yet a little while, and he that and he that shall come will come and will not tarry. Now the just shall live by faith, but but if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. But we are not of them who draw back unto perdition, but of them that believe to the saving of the soul. Mm. Applicable unto the Jews during the time of Jacob's trouble. And Hebrews chapter 11, verses 32 on to verse 40. Okay? And what shall I more say? For the time would fail me to tell of Gideon, and of Barak, and of Samson, and of Jephthah, of David also, and Samuel, and of the prophets, who through faith subdued kingdoms, wrought righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouths of lions, quenched the violence of fire, escaped the edge of the sword, out of weakness were made strong, waxed violent in fight, turned to, fl turned to flight the armies of the aliens. Women received their dead raised to life again, and others were tortured, not accepting deliverance, that they might obtain a better resurrection. And others had trial of cruel mockings and scourgings, yea, moreover of bonds and imprisonments. Imprisonment. They were stoned, they were sawn asunder and tempted, were slain with the sword. They wandered about in sheepskins and goatskins, being destitute, afflicted, tormented, of whom the world was not worthy. They wandered in deserts and in mountains and in dens and caves of the earth. All and these all having obtained a good report through faith, received not the promise. God having provided some better thing for us, that they without us should not be made perfect. Isaiah chapter 10. Isaiah chapter 10. Isaiah chapter 10. Verses 20 on to verse 27. And it shall come to pass in that day that the remnant of Israel and such as are escaped of the house of Jacob shall no more again stay upon him that smote him, but shall stay upon the Lord, the Holy One of Israel in truth. The remnant shall return, even the remnant of Jacob, unto the mighty God. For though thy people Israel be as the sand of the sea, yet a remnant of them shall return. The consumption decreed shall overflow with righteousness. For the Lord God of hosts shall make a consumption, even determined in the midst of the land. Therefore thus saith the Lord God of hosts, O my people that dwellest in Zion, be not afraid of the Assyrians. He shall smite thee with a rod, and shall lift up his staff against thee, after the manner of Egypt, after the manner of the world. For yet a very little while, and the indignation shall cease, and mine anger in their destruction. And the Lord of hosts shall stir up a scourge for him, according to the slaughter of Midian at the rock of Ora. And as his rod was upon the sea, so shall he lift up, so shall he lift it up after the manner of Egypt. And it shall come to pass in that day, that his burden shall be taken away from off his shoulder, off thy shoulder, and his yoke from off thy neck, and the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. You got time for one more? Hmm? And the dragon was wroth with the woman, and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony. Of Jesus Christ. On your own time, read Ezekiel chapter 37, verses 11 to verse 28. Because I'm going to call it quits for this video. Okay? Again, brethren, sisters, please forgive me of my error that I committed in saying that um, the war in heaven had already happened. It clearly has not.
I was in error, and please forgive me of that uh, error that I committed. The Lord corrected me through the scriptures, and praise the Lord for it. Hopefully this, this video will answer any questions that people are like, Brad, what do you mean? Hopefully this video will answer that. Okay? So um, that's going to be it for this video. Thank you all, brothers and sisters, Church of the Living God. We will see you in the next video. Okay?